Hey guys, Wages World here, gonna do a video. Hey, I got a, like a year in review type of thing coming at the end of this video. I went through back through all my videos and took some screenshots from the past year. And I put it together in a slideshow with some pretty cool transitions and some music to it. Um, you guys should check it out at the end of this video. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I um, hope it'll give you an idea of what we've been looking at here, uh, at least here on my channel for the past year. Um, you know, it's got a lot of CME stuff in there, a lot of the captures of our object, a lot of other stuff in there too. Um, so stick around, and check that out. It's pretty cool. But um, what we're going to talk about real quick, I'm not going to make this a long one because of that. I mean, I may come back on before the new before New Year's Day and do another video for you guys. But um, this sunspot right here, okay, <laughs> that's its location right now. Um, again, equator of the sun, Earth is kind of here. Now, you heard me start talking about that sunspot when it was way over here. I've, you know, I've been saying, you know, we need to pay attention as it starts rotating this way, right? Now, it hasn't had a flare or anything like that yet, at least not a big one. But this is yesterday's capture of the sun, okay? Now, th this, again, this is, uh, today is the 28th, I think, um, going to the 29th, but... What we're seeing here is we're seeing a coronal hole in a sunspot directly earth facing at the same time okay so why is that important well because it is almost definitely going to increase our our geomagnetic activity in other words we're going to have some sort of a solar uh, wind event um it's not going to be huge i don't think i do think that it might be something we need to pay attention to um it could be bigger it could be smaller i'm not sure yet um it's just kind of a you know, wait and see type of thing when we're talking about this anyway. Now, the fact that they're both there at the same time, <laughs> in my opinion, does increase the intensity and it does increase the chances of us having a, a G1 or 2 level uh, magnetic storm. Um, does that mean anything? Well, not really. Um, we may see increased uh, auroras. We could see some satellite problems. We could see and if it is stronger than what I think it might be, we could see other issues. But at the same time, this is actually kind of, it's kind of a good thing in the fact that this sunspot is here because it does help radio propagation. You know, emergency vehicles operate on off, off of the radio propagation, okay? So when, that, when we get the energy from these sunspots, the radio uh, is able to transfer easier and better with less outages. So it does help those people, um, but on the butt end of that, it also kind of hurts GPS users. So it, it is just, yeah, it's a yin and a yang type of thing. Um, again, the best place to be is in the middle, right, when we're talking about geomagnetic activity. Now, <laughs> this is today, right here on, on the 211 angstrom. Okay, now again, it's already rotated off a little bit, but that energy won't get here for another two or three days. So, um, I'm going to take you over and show you the Enlil model, but again, here's Earth. And so, you know, we definitely seen a coronal hole rotate through. Um, we've seen the sunspot rotate through, and they rotated through at the same time. So, I do think that that's going to increase our chances of having some uh, geomagnetic activity here. So, give me a second here. Okay, guys, I got you over here at Space Weather. Um, it's at NOAA site. All right, now... Um, what we're looking at here, guys, is that's the geomagnetic activity. Now, I'm, I'm looking at this, and I really don't like it, okay? Um, and people will ask me that, why? Why don't you like it when it looks like this? Well, the reason being is because when it's low like this for extended periods of time, more cosmic rays get through, okay? And that does directly affect people's health. It just does. There there would be no reason for them to issue watches and warnings for pilots and crew and uh cabin crew and people in the nor uh, the northern and southern uh, poles, the closer you are to those, the further you, you're away from the equator, the more cosmic rays can affect you because just the way that the magnetics come in, they actually come in through the poles a lot easier. Um, more stuff gets through there. Uh, and there's other, you know, like the South Atlantic anomaly, that is a crazy spot in the South Atlantic, obviously, that has some jacked up magnetics. Um, it, it doesn't seem to act like the rest of the <laughs> of the planet. And there's other areas 
you know, obviously there's theories like the the Bermuda Triangle and all the magnetics there and all the all the stories that come with that. But you know, it is whatever you want to believe on that. I'm cool with it. But <laughs> but um yeah. So when we see these low activities here, guys, um yeah, we just want to be in the middle. Okay, we don't want to be way up here and we don't want to be way down there. So whenever you see that not in the middle, we got to pay attention. So as we go over here, this is the Enlil model, and this is uh, basically saying exactly what I just told you guys. Okay, um, this is actually predicting us to have some sort of a geomagnetic event on the first going into the second. Okay, now I'm going to try to explain a couple things here. Okay, what you got is you got, this is the conditions at Earth, right, the green line. And these are the spiral graphs over here on the left. Now, the top is the density. Okay, we're going to talk about that first. Okay, so when we look at this graph, that's that's the range, 5 to 15. Usually, that's sitting about between 2 to 5, okay, or 5 to 8 or something like that. 5 to 15 is definitely larger than what the normal conditions are. Why is it, why is it up that high? Well, it's because of this, this little hump right here, okay? Now, what that is, guys, remember... When a coronal hole comes through, even a sunspot, it takes it three to four days for that energy to get here, sometimes a little longer. That's why. Today is right here. Count out three days. One, two, three. Okay, so that, that right there is exactly what they're, why this model is showing this. It's because of that coronal hole and that sunspot. They rotated through at the exact same time. So this is when they think this is going to get here. Now, can this model be wrong? Absolutely. It changes all the time. Okay, because we're right here. We already know this is what happened. This is historic. And it tries to tell five days out in advance. That's just what this thing does. It's like a local on the eights, like I've said probably a thousand times already. But this spiral graph over here really tells the story. Here's Earth. And what you're going to see, I want you guys to watch right here, especially right in here. See what's happening? We take a direct hit. Do you see that? So if this model holds true, we will take a hit from, and we can't really tell you how strong it's going to be yet. Um, we really just don't know. I mean, we can kind of guess at it, but we can't. We don't know the, the, the density of the material or the exact speed until it starts hitting our detectors. Okay? And we don't have detectors sitting right outside the sun we just don't um, so anyway what you're seeing here and keep in mind this is a two-dimensional model we you know we try to look at this in a three-dimensional way it's hard for us to visualize that it just is but we do the best we can so really what you're seeing here guys is actually kind of coming up like this you see that if you can kind of imagine that that's why it looks to grow in density as it gets here okay it's actually kind of coming up at an angle that's what you're kind of seeing and again that's density what makes it such um, a more intense thing is that at the same time if you look down here at the velocity the velocity increases we very seldom see that shoot straight off the sun like that and come right at us okay for whatever reason usually in this little zone here the, the velocity, t you know, tends to be lower. Um, I'm not sure why that is, because um, I don't really see it lining up with any other planets, or maybe it's just the way that this model works. I'm not really 100% sure on that. But I can tell you right now that when we get high velocity, at the same time as we get high density, that definitely will give us a hit. It's going to be harder hit, okay? Because um, typically, and I've said this, so many times here on my channel <laughs> um, what you see is when the velocity goes up the density goes down and when the density goes up the velocity typically goes down well when they both happen at the same time that's when we take the biggest hits so that's what i think is going on um, i'm going to take you over to seeds and show you something real quick okay guys i got you over at seeds now again this is um, from soho which is sitting out in front of the earth also and looking at the sun, it's just in a slightly different angle than what SDO is. Um, but 
I'm going to run you through this a little, little bit here, okay? This is what happened, okay? I'm not sure if you remember my video a couple weeks, uh, not a couple weeks, a couple days back talking about how Soho, none of the tools on Soho were updating. Well, they still didn't. So something happened to the satellite itself. Something happened at the the environment around that satellite, something happened to where they weren't getting any data. Okay, what, what am I saying here? What I'm saying is that the satellite that sits out there has multiple tools on it. Usually when we see missing data and stuff, it's just from one or two, two, one or two tools on, the, on that satellite. Well, this time it was across the whole board on that satellite. So something happened at that satellite. Now the data is coming back in now, but this is on this is Christmas Day. We only got like three timestamps for the Christmas Day. This is the 26th. We get nothing. Okay, nothing. That's when it, it we got a blackout on it. Okay. Now as we go forward to the next one, 27th. Obviously, you see how we're getting more data. Well, you guys can see here there was a CME. Okay, and it looked to be like two of them, maybe. Um, I'm going to slow that down so you guys can see it. Now, they weren't Earth-directed, okay? So it's not that huge of a deal. But the fact of the matter is, there was a CME. Okay, as you can see this, and I haven't really analyzed this too much right now. Um, I, I would almost guarantee at some level I could probably dig into that and see what's going on right there. Now, I'm going to say this too. That CME had just popped right there. Right here, I haven't seen one pop off that fast in a long time. What I mean by fast, I mean like moving very, very quickly. Bam, look at that. Okay, usually it takes it quite a few timestamps. And I went down here and was watching the timestamp, and it was not jumping time. So that tells me that what, what I was looking at there is moving really fast. If you compare it to what's coming off the bottom, you can see what I'm talking about. Watch this little ejection here. We'll watch it here for a second. And I got this slowed down, guys, like half. Okay. <laughs> First you see that, which is typical. It's a lot of light. You see how it's moving at that speed? Now watch the top one. Wham, out it goes. Two or three timestamps, it's off the screen. That thing booked out of there. <laughs> okay. So I'm just glad that what didn't come at us. Um, if it had, uh, we'd have had one or two days and we'd have been like, here's the CME. Um, and it would have been, you know, when stuff, when particles are moving that fast, it does hit harder. Okay. Um, that was a fast one. Now I watched it over on SDO and, um, yeah, you seen it just blow off. I mean, it blew off fast guys. Um, but it wasn't earth directed. So I really didn't, you know, try to come right on and tell everybody about it because it just wasn't going to really affect us but we have i just still wanted to show it to you guys so um but yeah yeah guys stick around check out all the captures from this past year um i put some pretty pretty upbeat some pretty cool music with it um hopefully you guys will like the transitions in, in the slideshow i've been trying to do a little bit better with the editing and stuff like that um i'm sure you guys can kind of tell that like my intro and stuff is a little bit more quality than what it was when i first started my channel uh, when I first started my channel, everything was vertical, if you guys can remember that. Um, yeah, that's I've grown in that area, and hopefully my knowledge of what I report on here is growing too. I think it is, but um, I'm still just trying to learn as much as I can, guys. And I look forward, and I'm, thank you guys so much for sticking around here with me. Um, you know, again, I'm going to say this. You guys are the reason why I even do any of it. Um, if I didn't think I could spread any or even help a little bit of somebody to understand something um i wouldn't even do it i just wouldn't i don't monetize i don't do any of that kind of stuff so i'm not driven that way on this channel um but i do i do think it's important to get out what i think is true and what, what what's going on and all that so um <laughs> yeah and i think that here in the next year we really need to be paying attention because as the sun comes out of the minimum its activity is going to increase, but our magnetic field is not going to rebound as quick as the sun will increase in activity. So we will 
be at greater danger from CMEs and solar flares and, and that kind of a thing. Now, is anything going to happen? I can't tell you that, guys. Um, but I do think we're going to see an uptick in, in events. So um, always pay attention to earthquakes, all that kind of a thing. But check out the stuff here at the end of the video. Um, God bless you guys. I'll try to come back on um, before the new year and give you guys another video. If I don't, you guys have a great, great New Year's. And uh, God bless. Yeshua saves. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say it again, guys. You can drink this Kool-Aid.